Since before the advent of written history, humans have been using stories and tales to pass on cultural ideals, heroes, and values from generation to generation. Those stories impact and shape our worldviews and childhood memories. How do our childhood stories affect us? How can we use the power of storytelling to better advance our younger generations? What are some funny memories that you remember about stories you've heard? I am Arpana. And I'm Zion, and we're joined today here by Arizona Teens to discuss storytelling. That and more on today's episode of Spot On. Shannon, what's one story or movie that you remember watching, that you enjoy watching or reading, no matter the day or age? Um, I know one of my favorite series was the Barbie series. Like the books and the movies, I just remember me and my Nolly laying in bed before going to sleep, just reading the bedtime stories. Or just a chapter in general. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, what about you, Alex? Yeah, so I'm a huge Greek, Greek mythology nerd. So I read the Percy Jackson series when I was younger, and I still read it now because I think they're just like, they're really interesting books to read. First of all, they're just like really good books that I like reading. And also, I think they just were something that, like, interested me for a long time, and they still do, and it makes me really nostalgic when I read them, so I really like that. Do you think that your uh, love of Greek mythology stems from Percy Jackson, reading Percy Jackson as a child? Yeah, I think a lot of it does come from Percy Jackson, because a lot of, like, the books that I had available to me when I kind of, like, first started getting into it were either like super simplified versions or they were really like boring books that like didn't really have any interest to the myths or that like showed anything super interesting. So Percy Jackson like really gave me that like part I needed to learn about more Greek mythology. Uh, what about you, Logan? Um, I, I was really into video games and um, comic books. So I read a, a lot about superheroes and I read a lot about scores and I just I was really invested on the philosophy of what it means to be a good person and the flaw the mindset of how do I save someone, you know? Um I just I really liked like some of my favorite comic books were Spider Man and the Spider Man comic books and I really enjoyed the idea of Spider Man just being an everyday person. Like he's going through the same struggles as everyone else has so he like from paying his rent or finding a job or just keeping up with his classes while maintaining a healthy relationship while also being Spider-Man, you know? And I just, I really enjoy the storytelling behind all of them. Do you think that exploring what it means to be a good person when you were young helps you understand other people's points of views and worldviews now? It definitely did help me understand that there's always two sides to a story. There's always it's and it's good to be more empathetic and understanding than kind of based on what you think is right or wrong and understand what the other person is thinking as well. Yeah, um obviously like Marvel and DC movies are really popular now. Have you watched any of those and do you think they kind of deliver the same message that you were getting from those comics when you were younger for sure um one of my favorite marvel movies was well two was um there's two of my favorite i loved captain america winter soldier and i loved civil war because i love that idea of like Ca captain america being like he's struggling to keep up with today's morality and he's still stuck like i hate bullies you know this is wrong i believe this is wrong and i will fight for that while everyone else is like, we need security, we need to be more restricting on people's freedom. And I, I really enjoyed that idea behind it. Yeah, um, thank you for sharing. Next question. Does what you watched as a kid affect you now or did it only affect you back then? Jacob, what's your opinion? I think it definitely affects, especially now, because growing up, I used to watch a lot of like Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, all the stuff like that was available. And it affects me because it helps me, one, connect with my friends, but also it taught me some lessons. 
and I guess molded me as a person. Like there's a lot of stuff that when you're scrolling through YouTube or like Twitter and you see a clip from the show, it brings back a lot of memories and like some laughs. And it, it definitely helped a lot. Do you have any favorites um, from Cartoon Network or Disney Channel that you always remember? Um, not Cartoon Network and Disney Channel, but I loved SpongeBob. That was one of my favorites. And because uh, there's a lot of episodes, and I'm pretty sure it's still going on. But I remember I'd wake up like on Saturdays, I turn on the TV, and it'd always be playing. So that was always a good feeling. Yeah, it's very nostalgic looking back now. What about you, Sabum? Do you have anything in particular? Um, when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of kind of scary movies, like children's scary movies, and it affected me then. I would get scared at night every time I would watch them, but I would keep watching them. Um, I remember when I was like seven or eight, whenever the first movie came out, I saw um, Coraline. And at first I was fine. I didn't have any problems, but I started to notice like every October, like around Halloween, I would have like a dream that um, I was stuck in the movie. And at the time it didn't really affect me, but like later on, um, it kind of scared me, you know, I've moved past that, but uh, I thought it was kind of funny that that one movie that I really liked a lot had like a lasting impact that I didn't think about. So uh, since you used to watch horror movies back then, do you think it scared you from watching them nowadays or do you still enjoy watching horror movies? It's really the same thing that happened when I was little. Like before I would watch like kid versions like Frank and Weenie or like goosebumps or stuff like that. But now I watch like legitimate horror movies and I still get scared after I watch it. I'll be fine while I'm watching it, but like sometimes I'll sit in bed and I'll be like, you know what? That was kind of terrifying. And so it didn't really stop me from watching it. It kind of just continued the same behavior. Yeah, I can kind of relate to that. What about you, Peter? Do you have anything in mind? Um, I believe that it does. Um, I think it sticks with you. Because, uh, for instance, I used to watch a lot of suspense movies when I was younger. So growing up, I'd watch more suspense movies, and I still enjoy them to this day. What's your favorite thriller that you've watched so far? Um, I don't know if this is considered a thriller, but uh, I like Stranger Things. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can relate with you on that. What about you, Zion? What's your, what's your take on this question? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm still a child now, but uh, I think that, you know, when I was, like, really young, like, I used to watch a lot of, you know, I'd like PBS, like, Sabu Mafu and Doran Diego and all of those kind of, you know, encourage learning and being curious, and I think that definitely affects me and affects, like, my curiosity and, like, enjoyment of learning now, but uh, it's not, like, a sure thing, like, Obviously, as you have, like develop taste, like you, you, your taste change. Like I'm kind of the opposite of everyone in this, where like I just didn't watch any horror movies when I was a kid. But now, like I, I love horror movies. Like, but I, I want to know if you call them like horror movies, but things like you know, Midsommar and Suspiria and Parasite and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember watching PBS Kids back then, and I think it's really fueled into how much I've known nowadays, like my way of learning is very visual, just like how watching PBS Kids, which is a TV show, I mean, the TV shows in PBS Kids used to help me learn and uh, like increase my vocabulary. So yeah, I think we can relate on that aspect. Thank you. Uh, Alex, do you think that children are blank slates when it comes to consuming media and their taste is determined by what they happen to stumble upon or do children children have tastes at a young age? Uh, yeah, I believe that children are blank slates and they absorb whatever they came across um, as like TV show programs. They're uh, on a program or a schedule and they don't have any choice to choose what they want to watch or unless they record it, which I doubt they would know how to do that. Um, but whatever they had available, they would just absorb it. And, um, yeah. 
do you think that uh, the movies you watch later in life are affected by like what you watch when you were young? Um, I do think they have little effect, but not anything life changing. Um, it's not going to change whether you are a nicer person or a meaner person. Like it does change the way how you think about things sometimes. If there's like a lesson to be learned in the movie or show. Uh, what about you, Sonal? I agree with Elias. I think that children are definitely blank slate or blank slates until a certain age. And I guess that age is like when they can consciously decide like, oh, I have taste or this is what I like or this is what I want to do. And until then, I think that what you consume is kind of influenced by your parents. You kind of get what's given to you. I know that when I was younger, I mostly, like you guys were saying earlier, I watched a lot of PBS and a lot of educational shows because that's what my mom wanted me to see. And so whenever I would watch TV, I would watch something that involved learning or something that involved a skill because she wanted me to develop those skills when I was younger. And then as I got older, I started to notice that like, hey, I like watching Disney Channel or I like watching Nickelodeon. And I would start um, choosing those shows for myself, but until I could decide like what I really liked, everything that I saw and like my tastes were influenced by what my mom put in front of me. Yeah, I mean, obviously sometimes looking back on shows, we often, see a deeper message that we might have missed the first time. Do you think that children are able to uh, comprehend nuanced topics in their show or like are they pretty one dimensional when it comes to comprehension of topics? I think it depends on the child. Um, and it also kind of depends on like the topic. I know there's some things like I have little cousins and there's some things I can pick up like if they're talking if they can make connections between certain things I know if, I don't know if they can like infer specifically or get like references to certain things but I know like around the time I spent with my little cousins and with myself like they can definitely make connections between like the things they see in shows and the things they experience in real life because um sometimes what we watch in shows carry out onto real life are you in favor of more restrictions on te children's television or less? Again, I think it's for the parents to decide for their specific kid. Every kid's kind of different. Some kids kind of absorb things more easily and some kids are impacted more easily than others. I know that there are certain things that we should restrict, like ads targeting children, trying to influence them to purchase something or think a certain way, I think those should be limited. But as far as like channels or TV shows, I think it's up for the parents to decide like what's acceptable for their child and what they want their child to see. Uh, what about you, Isaac? Uh, I guess with the question in mind, uh, I, th I do think that children eat, uh, will eat up just about anything that you throw at them in, I guess, like in consuming media, but I, uh, while it can influence their taste, I do think that uh, children can have tastes of their own and, you know, growing up, those would either get stronger or maybe weaker, depending on the media that they are consuming until at some point when they become an adult, it just, you know, they're their own kind of person, I guess. And uh, what impacts you more in books or movies? Uh, movie or movies. Uh, I'm more of a visual learner, and uh, I like animation, so that would make sense. Uh, thank you. Why do you think many children's tales often follow the same format, although those cultures were incredibly separated and isolated from each other? Alex, do you have any uh, specific stories that you remember? Um, for me, kind of in general, why I think like all these cultures have similar aspects in their stories is because a lot of stories were used to explain things or like morals or teach people things or like just to explain phenomenons that like people didn't know then. So like there are several stories like from several different cultures about like why it rains or like why there are clouds. And I think they just kind of all share that common like theme of trying to explain something that they don't exactly know how to, so they use it through a story. 
Yeah, I can definitely um, see where you got that viewpoint from because I remember you saying earlier that you're a Greek mythology nerd. So do you uh, remember any specific stories that you found were similar to Greek mythology to your own culture or something that you've heard before? Um, not particularly. Um, I'm mixed race and I have like, my parents didn't really tell me a lot of stories like that came from their cultures. So I didn't see a lot of connections but just from, I can't think of any specifically right now, but from just other cultures of stories I've heard of, they're definitely very similar ones. Thank you. What about you, Simone? Do you have any specific examples? Um, when I think of like similar stories, I kind of think of fables. Um, there's a lot of like stories that have like moral lessons or that kind of convey beliefs that are similar in different cultures. And I think it's because there are common like human beliefs and experiences that we all share and we all like to tell each other. There are things like relationships with others, like family members, goals, morals, um, that are consistent between like all people, regardless of like what language you speak or where you live or what culture you have. I think that all people have the same kind of core values regardless of where you live and I think that's shown in our stories because we tell the things we experience and the things we see and despite like being separated by like bodies of water or like thousands of miles all these different cultures have the same experiences that they relay in their stories. Do you have any specific stories that you know um, aren't true, but you still believe it regardless because of, I don't know, fear or whatever your parents told you prior? Um, I can't think of any specific ones as far as stories. Um, there are some like superstitious things that I don't believe, but I've seen like that are common between people of like different cultures, like things that you shouldn't do if it's like, if you do this, you'll get bad luck, or it's like a bad omen, or you shouldn't do this or that, that I've seen like common, but there aren't any like specific ones that I still believe. Yeah, I can definitely relate because my parents told me not to whistle at night, which is super weird. And they told me like, if a black cat crosses your car, that means your, your journey is set out to go bad and superstitious things. But when they tell you repeatedly, it impacts you because you start to believe it's true. Um, so thank you for that. And what about you, Zion? Do you have anything specific? Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of to go off what Simone said, all cute, like storytelling is a very intrinsic part of the human experience. We can see from like, you know, even before like towns and civilizations, like humans have had like complex religions and stories that they pass on from like, you, forever ago and like from the earliest known piece of literature which is like the epic of gilgamesh to like you know lord of the rings and star wars now they all or just like things that were separated like on entirely different continents like those cultures would have never had any contact with each other they all have the same stories just because as humans we kind of have these same wants and desires to like like the escapism and like the passing on of moral beliefs and being a good person. And I think it was really interesting to read the epic of Gilgamesh because it doesn't feel like an old story. It feels like a very familiar story that you've read before just because we have read those stories before because there are certain tropes and cliches and archetypes that speak to us as humans and that are kind of just built into us as humans. And we can see those pop up pretty much anywhere in any culture. Yeah, I definitely relate with you because I've also learned Epic of Gil Gilgamesh in um, classics. So, yeah, thank you. What, uh, Logan, what, what crappy movie did you watch as a kid? And like, you're watching it now and you're like, holy crap, that movie was terrible. Why did I watch that? Uh, there's a lot of different shows and movies that I have watched that were re most recent was Ace Ventura, and it was a it's a good comedy, for and it came out not 
like almost 20 years ago and looking back on it rewatching it it was very it was very transphobic as as well as it was it it was really sexist really transphobic and it was it was one of those movies that kind of aged pretty bad like i'm sure it was a lot the social standard was different then for comedy but uh, yeah that that movie did not age very well I, yeah, I can definitely relate to you, not just with comedies, but like I watch a lot of old movies too. And sometimes you're watching them and sometimes like the things they say or like the way the characters are written are a bit like, ugh. Um, what about you, Shannon? Uh, I know one of my childhood movies was Valiant. It's, it's about pigeons going to boot camp for really like a whole war kind of movie, but it's pigeons. Uh, what is there anything specific about it that stood out to you and its terribleness? Um, I mean, the story was okay for a child, but one thing that really came to me was the animation, and it's just. Do you think that like the animation was okay then? It just aged poorly, or it was just always like poorly animated? You just didn't realize it then. I think it's just one of those things where I thought it was amazing and I didn't realize it was so bad until now. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely relate. There are a lot of movies like that on like bootleg television channels that would like run only on computers that I used to watch a lot. Uh, what about you, Simone? A lot of the kids' movies that I used to watch, like, you know, some of the Disney Channel originals are, like, Nickelodeon TVs made for children. Like, um, the, the examples I'm thinking of now are, like, Shark Boy and Lava Girl or, like, Spy Kids. I used to love watching those movies when I was younger. I thought they were amazing. They're the coolest thing. I watch them every time they come on. I get excited when I see them, like, on the queue for Disney Channel. And a couple of years ago... I just decided to rewatch them and see like how I felt about them. And I realized that the quality of movie was not that great. I think that now I have kind of higher standards for what I think a good movie is. Like the story still had a, held up. It was entertaining, but like the production, the acting, um, the script, um, it wasn't as good as I thought it was. And I think that, now that I'm older, I can kind of spot the difference between like a poorly made movie and like a really well made movie. Yeah, I think those movies have taken on a kind of a uh, room or Neil Breen esque so bad it's good uh, kind of movie like trope. Logan, how do you think storytelling has changed with technology? I think it has changed a lot over the period of time, um, especially now where we have interactive films and interactive video games. I, I remember my one of my favorite video games was Detroit Become Human, and I really enjoyed it because I felt like my choices were very important to, in the, per, the to progress to progress through the story. Um, I know Netflix has had a couple of movies that you can interact and you get to choose um like which path you take so i don't know i think storytelling has changed a lot over the past couple of years and has changed it's going to change even more i'm sure comparing the 2000s to um the 2010 um years do you find any um super um drastic differences yeah <laughs> for sure um i remember storytelling like we we would still we we didn't like audiobooks weren't even a thing back in the 2010s too much like we'd have to get our own books at the library more often than now where we could just look up anything online and video games itself wasn't very like as in depth as video games are now I'm sure well I'm sure I lived through experienced um 
it's a lot has changed and I feel somewhat nostalgic when I go back and do all I had regarding like reading old stories or watching old and movies and it's it's kind of to look back on. Yeah, I definitely relate as I also I as much as I loved reading books, it was a, uh, it was hectic to go back to the library and then drop off my books and then pick pick up new ones. But yeah, thank you for your insight. Uh, speaking of storytelling changing with technology, obviously we live in an internet age where a lot of things get turned into memes, uh, one of those things being movies. Ryan, do you like that kind of memification of movies? And if you do or don't, why? Um, I guess it depends, but uh, in my opinion, a movie's um, kind of legacy or impact can be greatly affected by memes. One such example is like Lord of the Rings, which had a lot of memes made about it like um one does not simply and you know you shall not pass some pretty popular memes from it and uh although these memes were entertaining for a bit you know they affected the movie for a long time you know some people might have seen it less serious or taken it less serious but also in a more positive way some people might have gone and watched the movie they didn't originally know about because of these like they learned about it through this so uh, you can kind of see it as a positive thing and a negative thing i think ultimately it's more positive like it might probably cause more people to watch it and it caused more people to like think it's bad. I think it was a more positive effect, but yeah. Do you think that uh, like mood is getting turned into memes? Memes that's just part of like the evolution process of art now, and like it kind of enhances the experience. Or do you think that uh, if if a movie was kind of made made in a vacuum, it would like people would enjoy it more? I mean, I think it's a natural part of the process now. Memes are so popular with, you know, everyone, kids, adults, everybody kind of sees them all the time that it's only natural when a popular film series like Lord of the Rings or Marvel or like a video game like Among Us, you know, gets really popular. A lot of memes are made about it. I think that's pretty natural. I think that's a pretty normal thing. Um, I think it can detract from the, the movie's like legacy a bit, but ultimately I think um, it kind of adds to it a bit. It allows for a wider audience of people. Uh, what about you, Mustafa? So, um, so a movie like when you asked me that question, the movie that came to my mind, Zion, is one of my most favorite legendary movies of all time. Absolute pinnacle of animated storytelling and poetry of our time, and most recently, the height of memes in movies, which is Shrek. Um, Shrek, very dear to me and heartfelt to me, had a meaning. It has a meaning in my soul, since I've watched it over like thirty times in my lifespan. I know all the songs, all the scenes memorized, and every time it comes up in public, a question or discussion about it, I'm the person people come to. But when I saw these memes on the internet about this movie, deep and dark memes scouring throughout the web, memes such as like Shrek or well-known Shrek is love, Shrek is life, I don't fail to notice that they have ruined the legacy of such an impactful movie. Um, these, these memes, they have sparked many arguments, ruined many friendships, and have scarred me for life. But like an onion, my scars, will, my scars will peel, and one day I may eventually be able to reach a point where I can appreciate, Sh when I can appreciate Shrek once again. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to know that these things that people are saying, they can have a dark side, and you're obviously a very, you're a living example of that, and I think it yes. speaks for everyone when I say our hearts go out to you and we'll be, he we'll be here through your recovery. Thank you so much, Zion. No problem. What about you, Dylan? Well, one of the biggest things for me, I guess, is how uh, media can take, you know, an emotionally impactful scene and just alter it, um, just like comically alter it into a scene that no longer has its original meaning to it. For example, you might have an emotionally sad scene that's in a movie, but because of, you know, the memification of that scene, it no longer holds its original, you know, emotional value that it has. Because, you know, someone, you know, like, for example, someone new who might have not even seen that movie before, but knows the meme from that movie, might will just watch that scene and just see the meme rather than what the scene is actually telling the audience. 
do you think that having memes from such a wide variety of uh, forms and movies, do you think that increases culture or like not, not culture, but just like awareness of different forms of art and like it helps discussion when talking about it? Um, I would say it does mainly because although, you know, I might find it annoying that someone might take, you know, an emotionally impactful scene and turn it into something comical, you know, at the same time, you know, it's bringing awareness to that movie and bringing awareness to that scene. And, you know, someone who may have never seen that movie before knows that movie because of that one scene. And then maybe they'll want to watch that movie, you know? So I guess, yes, because memes are a pretty big um, part of our culture today right now. And just with all these, you know, references to things, I guess it does bring a lot of awareness to all these things that you never could have thought you would have known. Uh, thank you for your input. I loved all your responses. And uh, today's session was very uh, insightful and I loved everyone's avid participation. Raina, do you have any final thoughts on today's conversation? Thanks, Arpana. Um, I think it's very interesting because these group of teens would probably be considered children in the eyes of many adults, but it's really interesting to see that they're able to reflect on their past and how media has affected them in their childhood because words do matter and the things that we tell our children are important. So hopefully that they're able to reflect on these stories and it can impact the way that they're maybe parents or teachers or how they interact with children in the future. Thank you, Raina. There were a lot of interesting takes today. And I think that one thing we can take from today is that stories are and have always been an intrinsic part of the human experience. And it can be both fun and insightful and sometimes a little heartbreaking to look back at those stories and how they affect us. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. We would like our thing we'd like to thank our guests for joining us today. Thank you. The viewer for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you'd like to join the discussion, please comment below. From Spot 127, I'm Zion. And I'm Arpana, and this has been another episode of Spot On.